So here's a pretty typical biotemps case. You can see we've got uh, two teeth that are broken off nearly at the gum line, the central incisor and the first bicuspid here. And so the doctor wants to um, prep all these teeth and then replace those two that are broken down and missing, which is going to be fine. And I'll grab the opposing model for a second here. And you can see, again, the patient really doesn't have much in the way of uh, posterior teeth. And as we put these two together, you'll notice that there's really nothing in the posterior to help us get this relationship. Now, the doctor took a bite registration, but it was just on the anterior teeth. And so when we go to put these together, when we went to mount it, you can see that we still had the, uh, a little difficult time trying to figure out where these ridges would be in relation to each other. And I know it's asking a lot to do a bite block for a case like this. You know, I doubt you would order a bite block in advance and have the patient bite into it. So we got some posterior support. But another way to do it is just kind of with a, a mush bite or even just mix some impression putty and have the patient bite into it on their edentulous ridges. I, I mean, it's far from perfect, but at least it gives us an idea if we're on the right track when we go to hand um, articulate it. But we were able to our, articulate these two together. And once we do that, what we actually do is take and make an index record of that. And so we will take some, we'll take some impression putty, the same kind that I just mentioned to you. Once we have it mounted on this articulator and we push the impression putty in between the two arches like that and up against the palate to support it. Once we've determined the correct position, the correct vertical for where those edentulous ridges should be. And what that allows us to do is when we actually do our bio temps, and you can see here the bio temps are already prepped and on the model here, but we want to be able to transfer that bite relationship to what we're doing with the bio temp models. And so at this point, you can see that we're closed down onto that putty because we've prepped all the teeth now. So even if we had good anterior stops, we have now lost them by preparing the model uh, for the bio temps itself. So we have the bio temps here. It's been made as a one unit, and that's what I would do for a case like this. And I want to point out uh, here on the PONIC, we've got the development of the ovate PONTIC receptor site here. So you can see when we look at it, and this is such a great way to develop that, you can see those two centrals are the same length. And keep in mind that tooth number eight is an abutment, as you'll see there, and tooth number nine is a pontic, but we want to make sure that when they're sitting on the tissue, these gingival levels are the same on teeth number eight and nine, because that's really important for the overall aesthetics of this case. So as we put it back onto the model itself, you can see that what they've had to do, we've now achieved that. Eight and nine are the same length at the gingival margin, but to do that, we had to socket this model. And we tend to go about five millimeters into the tissue. You've probably seen some videotapes where I've gone in before and created that ovate ponic receptor site if the extraction had been done years ago with either a hard tissue laser, or I can do it with a diode laser. I can do it with a round burr once we get to the bone, or you can do the whole thing with a round burr as well, creating this ovate ponic receptor site if you've got a full ridge there. This is a great opportunity because of the fact that we've got that broken down tooth in place that the day we do the extraction of that tooth and the one behind it, we're going to have this open socket here. And so it's perfect. I don't need to pack anything in that socket. I just need to extract the tooth, squeeze it with the cotton gauze, and then we reline the biotemp bridge into that spot and we're going to end up with an ovate ponic receptor that the tissue is going to heal right around that. And this is going to look gorgeous. We're going to give this six to eight weeks to heal. And by the time the tissue has the chance to heal around uh, that biotemp ovate pontic, it's going to look perfect when it comes time uh, to make the, the final restoration, the permanent bridge here. And so using a biotemp bridge in conjunction with extractions being done that day is a fantastic way to really get a great shot at having a nice looking ovate pontic receptor site. The second case I picked up is another fairly typical uh, biotemp case where we've got uh, a broken off tooth that's going to be extracted and actually due to periodontal reasons the dentist is also going to take out the other three incisors so uh, all four of those teeth are going to be missing and if we look at what we received from the dentist we have this lower model and we have our upper model and again you'll see when I put this into place and look at it there's still a little we have better posterior support here but we're still missing just a little bit when we get a bite registration on the 
anterior teeth only, but we do have more teeth here, and so we're able to dial this in. But again, a little putty behind those edentulous arches uh, can do a lot of good for just helping us to double check that we're in the right place. But we were able to mount this one without uh, too many issues, and I'll show you this case now with the bio temps in place. And one of the things that I like about what this dentist did here is you can see his plan is to prepare all these teeth. In fact, he's preparing two teeth on each side, and you can see the four uh, extraction sites that will become the ovate ponic receptor sites there. But you can see that these two teeth have remained unprepared. So the doctor's gonna prepare everything except for these two, and that's really smart in a case like this. If you don't do a lot of full mouth cases or full arch cases throughout the year, and just looking at the numbers of uh, crowns that we get in, we can see most of our dentists don't do a lot of those cases. Most of what we get in here at the lab and most of the dentistry that's done are one unit crowns and maybe two single unit crowns next to each other. So what this doctor has allowed for himself is a centric stop. So during this entire procedure, during the provisionalization, well, he relines the biotemp, when he takes final impressions and final bite registration, because he has kept these teeth in contact, he's maintained his vertical stop. And losing vertical and the patient not being able to get back to their bite again uh, is a troublesome thing and something that definitely happens in full arch or full mouth cases. And so by leaving these most distal two teeth uh, unprepared, he's making sure that he's always got his vertical. So when he actually uh, goes and puts the final restoration into place, he knows he's got the patient biting in the same place they were biting before. And of course, this is one of those cases where he does want the patient at the same uh, VDO that they were before biting in the same place. And then it'll be up to the dentist whether or not these two teeth need to be crowned uh, at a later date. But that's a great way to do it by keeping those uh, stops there. So again, all this dentist has to do is extract these four teeth in the anterior and prep the two here and then reline this biotemps bridge. And again, you'll see that we can just see that ovate ponic part on the biotemp just slipping into those extraction sites. And so again, this is just the easiest way to take advantage of the fact that you're doing a same day extraction. Just such an easy way to really create a natural looking uh, emergence profile where it'll look like the pontics on this bridge are, are literally growing right out of the tissue because they are. I mean, there's no root there, but they're coming right out of the tissue. Obviously not as important on a set of lower anteriors as it is on upper anteriors, but you might as well have it look good as long as you're doing it for the patient. They're gonna at least look at it once while they're in your office. So uh, biotemps, one of the great indications for me is to use them at the same time, the date of extraction, to create some beautiful ovate ponic receptor sites.